You are listening to Armchair Healthcare, a podcast on pills, placebos, and policy. All right, welcome to Armchair Healthcare. How you doing, Max? Pretty good. How was your vacation? It was great, thanks. And where'd you go? Uh, Portland, Oregon. Ah, scenic Portland. Did you go to the beaches? Are there beaches? There's no beaches in Portland. Ironically, even though it's named Portland, there's no, there's no, it's not like a, a seaport. But there's land, right? There is land. Lots of land. And yeah, it's on a river, so I guess that was the port or something. So did you have a lot of hipster brunches? I did have a fair number of hipster brunches. There's a big hash scene. And uh, don't look at me like that, Max. <laughs> you know, like uh, corned beef hash. Which oh, is like okay. my favorite. That's really? New, that's Seriously? their new hipster uh, breakfast food is hashes. And there, there is the other hash scene too. And it is, it is legal there now. So there is that. Well, yeah, I was thinking like, what are they trying to be like Moroccan now? You know, with a, with a hash scene? I don't know, man. I obviously think of different kind of hashes, but... I know, as, as evidenced by the, the topics that are frequently covered on the podcast. <laughs> hey, they're, they're pretty popular. So anyway. So yes, yeah, so biotech news, Max, focus. Yes, yeah, so biotech. So uh, there was some controversial data from Sangamo, and it was on their, for the treatment for Hunter syndrome. And so what was interesting here was that, so it was a dose-ranging study, and at the low dose, they showed no impact on like a key biomarker at all um at the the middle dose they showed a pretty nice impact on uh, they're trying to lower this biomarker called gag which is associated with like when you have too much of it it, it, it can hurt various organs and how they function yeah. etc yeah so the, the the uh these kids can't break down these gag molecules which includes heparin and one other thing i can't remember so the whole idea here is it's, it's similar to the CRISPR stuff. Only Sangamo has been using different technology for a while. Zinc finger uh, endonucleases uh, are supposed to basically make a genome edit and put the gene for this enzyme back into people's livers. Yes, and so they're yeah they're they're trying to get the livers to start making um, IDS, mm -hmm. but so they they had in this cohort a benefit on gag levels, but they actually weren't able to measure any increase in plasma IDS levels. So it's not clear if the drug's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, and also, th this was only in two patients. So we don't really know, were, were these people just had lower gag levels for some other reason? Is it just regular patient variability because gag levels can be impacted by urine concentration. Mm -hmm. uh, and also these people were on background Eloprase, which Eloprase is a enzyme replacement therapy um, sold by Shire. Mm -hmm. And it does work. It just, it, it clears the body relatively fast. So I think there's a lot of non-responders and, and theoretically these people were non-responders, at least based on the inclusion and exclusion criteria, but it wasn't quite clear what they considered a non-responder. And they did not present the baseline levels of gag or anything yes, for, for these people. So you don't so you but, don't really know how severe these people were. So yeah, so who knows? Maybe the two people on the arm that worked had high baselines because they just happened to be enrolled around the time of like an exacerbation or something like that. And then they just returned to normal, which was 50% lower. Yeah, or, or they had low gag levels to begin with. So, you know, it's a, it's a big difference if you're going from 500 to 150 in terms of gag, gag levels. But is it... That big of a difference if you're going from like 200 to 80 or something like that? Mm -hmm. The inability to detect this enzyme in these people's blood is surprising to me, frankly. I mean, I would think even if this stuff didn't work and you couldn't get high enough levels of this enzyme to for the treatment to be effective, you would probably still measure some of the enzyme in people's blood, right? We've got some really exquisite ways out there of measuring 
like picomolar concentrations of biological molecules out there. We can take uh, just a tiny sample of your tissue and find all sorts of stuff in it all the time. You mean people do all sorts of Western blots and other stuff like that to find every little molecule that they feel like in your tissue. And you can take a lot of blood out of people too before they, until they start to miss it, unlike m most other things. They did uh, see a plasma IDS levels in mice. Mm -hmm. someone, someone posted that So in, in previous studies. So it sh they should be able to measure it in the plasma. I mean, the company said on the conference call that you know, the, the organs were so in need of this enzyme that it just was all sucked up and there was nothing left in the plasma oh. to measure. Oh, I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. That's, that's not how any of this stuff works. Besides, these people are actually getting the same enzyme all the time. They're getting uh, injections of it from the enzyme replacement therapy. Why isn't all that stuff being sucked up? It's the same molecule. I mean, I, I, that's one thing that always makes me crazy. We talk about this sometimes here, this sort of magic thinking regarding medicine and stuff sometimes. The fact of the matter is uh, they're, they're putting in a gene to make the same molecule as the... Enzyme replacement. So it's the same molecule. It should be the same. You should be able to detect it the same way. You see the same sorts of levels, everything else. I mean, you should just have a uh, more steady stream of it. You know, another thing that was kind of annoying from the company is they were insisting that gag, a gag reduction would be an approvable endpoint for them. Mm -hmm. So if you look back at the l price approval for the same exact disease, the FDA required you know, change in FVC volume and also six-minute walk tests. So these were functional tests. That you, they don't want to just see some biomarker reduced. They want to see some evidence that it's actually doing something to improve people's lives. I don't know. I mean, as much as I think this data is crapola, I don't know about that. I mean, aren't they supposed to be being more progressive with uh, respect to biomarkers at the FDA now? Yeah, I, I mean, mean when they, was that approval? Yeah, yeah. The, oh, a while ago. So right. I mean, yeah, this FDA might approve this anyway, I guess. But historically, this wasn't the endpoint. If they can approve Sarepta based on a biomarker that basically failed, right? They didn't even see very much of the biomarker in, with Sarepta. They can approve this one. Well, th there's a little bit of a difference. First, those are kids in wheelchairs with no actual therapy available for anything mm -hmm. here you do have a currently available therapy um and you saw with uh fabre the fda always gave like replegal mm -hmm. a lot of trouble i mean so there mm -hmm. it it depends it can get complicated yeah but it, yeah we'll see there's still another dose level they're trying there's gonna be a higher cohort yeah. so hopefully we'll see more gag level reduction and some proof that the drug is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Another funny thing about this whole setup here, and I suppose this is probably a limitation of all of Sangamo's technology, is that they had to use three separate vectors to get the two halves of the zinc finger and then their uh, gene that they actually want to edit into these cells. And there's some issues with that. The main one being, that means anytime a cell is going to get this gene therapy and integrate it into their genome, they have to simultaneously be infected with three different viruses, right? And even if you dump just an absolutely absurd number of uh, viral particles into people, it can be difficult to get the sort of coverage, I imagine, uh, just because of statistics, right? Even if you're going to get 50% of cells for each of those three, you now you're already cut down to 12% of where you were initially, right? 12% of the cells actually getting something. That's likely just a limitation of this technology. The genes are probably just, they're big enough where they, each one needs a separate vector. There's nothing they can do about it unless they get a better vector. Yeah, I mean, Sangamo has always had a bit of trouble. I mean, they've been around for a, for a while. Mm -hmm. And I remember... I think 10 years ago, they, they were developing a drug that required like very localized injections. So it was something for diabetic neuropathy or something like that. And they, they had to inject like tw the leg 25 times, mm -hmm. you know, a couple inches apart. And you, they had like a map of where they would inject it. And it was just like it was all purely localized. Nothing could ever get systemic. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the drug failed. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely true.
to treat anything sort of out. This this bit is in the liver, so it's just really tightly connected to the circulatory system, so it shouldn't be too hard to get the virus there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and all this is essentially to get around... I'm just like, why even bother? This this With the same finger... I mean, lentivirus does everything that they're already trying to do here. Lentivirus will integrate... A gene into your genome just completely and you don't really have to do anything you just put the the gene into the lentivirus boom that's it and so they have to develop this whole complex system to sort of get around that i guess they can get it specifically inserted at a particular location in the genome so that's what they're saying and of course when people have said that sort of stuff before with crispr people come back later and are like okay it's not quite as specific as we thought it was it maybe causes cancer and stuff like that but we're working on it so yeah i mean i guess we'll just have to see if I guess if they can get sustained reduction in all these molecules, right? I mean, that's all that really matters. But it's just weird that you wouldn't see any enzymatic activity. Yes. Right? Like like zero. It's not quantifiable. They, they just, they're seeing nothing. Very strange. I mean, because you can just detect that with such precision nowadays. Yeah. Well. Anyway. All right, what else is there? Besides that, so Mankind actually did a, signed a nice deal with United Therapeutics, um, for an inhaled, an, another inhaled version of, of Tyveso, basically, just using the Mankind technology. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a pretty nice deal. It was $45 million up front, $50 million in milestones, and then low double-digit royalties. Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. I, I mean, I wish if only Mankind had done such deals this whole time, it would be in such a different place. Mm-hmm. Instead, they have to choose the worst possible market to go after, which is insulin. And in, instead of doing doing what they're doing here, which is, hey, we can improve the delivery of already approved drugs yeah. that are already also inhaled. I've always liked their technology. Yeah. I've always thought it was pretty good. I mean, there's just the, the, so many of these uh, sort of uh, inhalable companies have bungled this whole process, but theirs actually seems pretty decent. Yeah, it's, it, no, it, it's very decent. Look, they, they did, in the end, get approval for inhaled insulin. I know, which which is crazy, which is totally crazy if you think about it. I mean, it's a horrible product, and I don't know why they did it, but, you know, that's that speaks to the strength of the technology here. Yes. I mean, it was probably also, look, Al Mann, he's, he was kind of a legend. He had sold Minimed to, I think, Medtronic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so he's a billionaire. I don't, I don't, he probably is surrounded by sycophants, and he wanted to do insulin, mm-hmm. and no one could say no. So I think that the management's looking at these other avenues, and finally they're doing kind of what the company was supposed to be doing this whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, who knows? Maybe they can... Uh, I, I know people were thinking they might be going bankrupt relatively soon. I think with these kinds of deals, you know, it looks like they'll they'll have some legs. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be nice if they get rid of their diabetes franchise completely. I mean, it would just completely change the company overnight and investor perceptions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you would, you would lose all the uh, – talk about second fans. You would lose all the, the, the longs, the, the dedicated longs that have been pro-mankind for so long. No, I mean, if they're dedicated, they'll they'll still stick to it. They'll be like, well, you know, they're doing what's best. They were losing a lot of money on insulin. They could probably sell that business to someone. I don't know. Yeah, I like it when companies, and number one, I like it when companies approve products. I also, too, like it when they sell products. And three, I like it when they succeed. I am not as cynical as I maybe sometimes come off. I actually really hope that mankind is successful with this. I do like their technology, but... Yeah, I just gotta gotta call them how I see them, man. Yeah, I mean, look, the mankind people. We never, I never like disliked them, mm-hmm. you know, on any personal level. It was just sort of their strategy I didn't really like. Mm-hmm. And now it looks like they're, you know, they're, they're they're really trying to turn it around, and hopefully they do. It's just you know they have all this legacy stuff that they need to unwind and, mm-hmm. um, you know, expenses from selling a Frezza. Yeah. Which, look, if it came out at the same time as injectable human insulin, it'd probably be a completely different story. It's just they're trying to change an existing paradigm that's just so, so dug in. And it, it works really well. I mean, it works as, as good as you can ever expect it to. Yeah, no, it actually works really well. I mean, the only issue is, of course, the theoretical cancer risk of having the growth hormone going into your uh, lungs. Mm-hmm. And speaking of committed longs, the only people who are more committed are, might be the Northwest Bio investors. 
Okay, what did they do this time? Should this be a new running segment? Backholder quotes from Northwest Bio people on, on the, the podcast? Oh, we, we could totally do that. They had a promissory note due on August 25th. Okay. And right now it is... We're recording this on September 6th and still no 8K about it. And it was for like 1.4 million, which for a normal company is like completely insignificant. But considering they had something like 1.8 million in cash at the end of the second quarter, it's kind mm-hmm. of significant if they've either defaulted or paid it or, or um, had it transform into equity. Th- there should be some clarity, but it's, it's, it's in their 10Q, which is their latest SEC filing, that it's due on August 25th. Yeah. And it was so, only filed like 10 days something, ago. Something uh, that something material. Material yeah. to the operations of the company, like yes. whether it can operate. So. Yeah. And then so the most whenever I post something like this on Twitter, the most frequent question I get from Northwest Bio shareholders is nothing that refutes it because you can't refute something in their own SEC filing. They just ask me, "Why are you bothering covering this company?" It's kind of like, why are you messing with my with my long? I'm just playing around with this penny stock. Why are you even? Why are you picking on me? Mm-hmm. And look, two reasons. One, it's comical because it's just there's it's just the craziest stuff goes on with this company. I mean, it's just it's for me. I find this hilarious, but that probably just shows how boring I really am. <laughs> um, and and you know, number two, it's actually not an insignificant market cap anymore. I mean, it's a hundred million dollar company. I mean, in the grand oh, scheme God. of things, that's pretty pretty good. Yeah, it's twenty cents, but it has so many shares outstanding. It's a a dumpster fire. It's a dumpster fire. It's a fun dumpster fire. Yeah, exactly. Oh, speaking of fun dumpster fires, so Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop they got fined one hundred forty five thousand dollars. That's for- nothing for Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh yeah, that's nothing. I mean, that's how much she probably spends on some Burmese that's how much cheese. That's that, how much, yeah, she yeah. spends on dinner. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, she was she was fined one hundred forty five thousand, or Goop was for misleading claims for products including the Jade Vaginal Egg, which I, uh, apparently is supposed to like balance out your chakras and improve your energy mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. But I don't really quite understand how it, how, why would this ever work? Um, well, it it sits in your uh, lowest chakra. <laughs> Right. I believe it's called the root chakra. Is that the root chakra? I, I, honestly, root chakra. I honestly don't know my chakras very well. But it sits in that chakra, if you know what I mean. And as the energy flows through it, it redirects it. Is it like the force? Yeah, yeah, that's what all this stuff is. It's, it's, it's the energy flow, man. And as it flows through that chakra, you know, it's, it, it goes into the egg. It comes out the egg in an aligned direction. And so, so the egg acts like some sort of like dilithium crystal, just to mess with our science fiction references, and like helps you warp space time. It's more like a radio antenna. The... It's more like a radio antenna. Okay. I think it like picks up the signals. Do you want to pick up signals in the root chakra area? Um. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. You do. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh... Yeah, and this is interesting to me because I don't know the law with making like blatantly false claims. Like, like there's some medical, like they're, they're all this medical stuff is like when drugs and stuff we know pretty well. Okay, you can't say it's going to cure everything. You can't. You have to do some clinical trials and prove it. But with stuff that with total nonsense like this, you, it seems like you can just say as long as it's like just blatantly false. And no one would ever, a reasonable person would never take it too, too seriously. You can pretty much say whatever you want. No, I don't think that works right? that way. Remember they went after Cheerios for some of their oat brand claims or something? No. They were talking about how it's heart healthy. Um, so so th- there is a fine line in the supplement industry of what they can say. I think in this case, they were just making completely outlandish claims that... Like may cure cancer. Like, remember, the FDA did go after that bakery for saying that one of the ingredients in their food was love. Well, that's that's a labeling thing. But still, I mean, if they put love into it while they were making it, shouldn't you can say there's some chakra based love or something going on? Mm-hmm. Spiritual love. Yeah, I think you can say that. Yeah. But anyway, so the FDA doesn't it'll like increase that. your levels of love and happiness. But anyway, the the FDA didn't um, go after this. I think it, this was like the California state, uh-huh. something or other. And um, I mean, based on the fine level, I'm I'm assuming they're 
these jade eggs probably did not sell very well or else the fine would have been higher. No, they made a big splash. Yeah, they were fun, funny because like you can make fun of this stuff that they sell on that site. Like $2,000 one ounce serums or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. People have too, too many idiots have too much money. Well, I think I think a lot of people people of the in the same sort of social demographic as Gwyneth Paltrow like are literally looking for reasons to spend money because they they have so much money they, they really have no idea what to do with it. So what do people do? They buy yachts. Some people like to buy yachts. I mean, what is a yacht but just a hole that you just pour money into? But other people, this is their hole. This is the hole that they pour money into. It's health and wellness. Which which hole are you talking about? <laughs> Root chakra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, anyway. Oh, gosh. But, yeah, I, I'm glad they see something because I, it really rubs me the wrong way when the people can sort of get away. Because there are people out there that, you know, you need doctors, you need people in positions of authority in some degree to sort of say okay i think this is actually a real medical product this one isn't this is a good idea this is not a good idea you know because these uh, places like goop are taking advantage of people the people that are shopping there i uh, don't know whether these products work or not and neither should they you, know, you have to have somebody else basically say all right you can't just claim it's going to cure cancer that's what killed steve jobs man that's what killed steve jobs Oh, you mean the alternative therapies? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, he was like having all sorts of problems, and he didn't get his cancer treated. Yeah, no, there, there was. I remember seeing this was maybe several months ago. There was a study they did a study of people who did conventional therapy versus people who did alternative therapies for for cancer, mm-hmm. and the kaplan meier curves separate pretty quickly. The people who got conventional therapy did much better. So whenever you hear about you know, that, oh, chemotherapy is just going to hurt your quality of life and you should try these alternatives. I mean, just re- recognize you're, you're risking, you know, a shorter lifespan. I mean, the, because the evidence is quite, quite striking. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not your doctor, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not y- y'all's doctors either, but maybe they could just rebrand a little bit, be like, yo, I mean, like I always say, Taxol's from a tree, man. It's from a tree. It's natural. Oh yeah, that reminds me. It, it was um, I saw a commercial for this product called Zquil. Zquil. So apparently, it's like Nyquil, but it's all bot. They're like, oh, and it's drug free. We just have melatonin and other botanicals. And I'm like, well, aren't those kind of like drugs? I mean, what's the difference, yeah, really? There's not. Yeah. This is the same sort of magical think. Like I was talking about this magical thinking regarding you know, uh, how drugs work. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if it's got a molecule in it that is active, it's a drug. Like and you can take that molecule out and it doesn't matter if it's in the plant or not. There's lots of active stuff out there. People seem to think if something's natural, it's automatically better for you. Yes. But I mean, like the guy from that Strictly uh, natural. Yeah. And also the guy from the way back, didn't he die eating like a purely natural plant in Alaska? Yeah, he ate some plant he wasn't supposed to eat. Yeah, and he died a horrible 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 death. Yeah, he like died freezing in the cold poison from this i don't remember what it's called the ground apple or something like that yeah so um it's always better to go with stuff that's actually been tested Mm -hmm. fda approved because then at least you know what you're dealing with it's not kind of this mumbo jumbo of course in the last podcast i did talk about how many supplements i take but you know do what i say not what i do okay (laughs) (laughs) all right what else we got uh, so th- this was a fun one. So uh, I saw a lot of stories last week about how cheese is actually good for you. Now, historically, cheese has been considered a villain because of the saturated fat. Well, it's delicious. It it's, is delicious. I love cheese. It's really one of the finer things in life. Yes. It's, you know, it's like cheese, wine, anything. I don't know why it is. And this is maybe speaks to our heritage as, as human beings. Why is it that literally the best tasting things are things that are spoiled? Like what is wine but just spoiled grape juice? And, and what is cheese but spoiled milk? I mean, these are literally the best things in the world. Oh, my God. I just had a great idea for a new diet. You can start the spoiled diet. Ooh. Yeah, so you only eat spoiled food. Only eat, like, fermented foodstuffs. Yeah. I could probably do this because I can, I, like I said, just live on these things. You can make a multi-million dollar industry based on this. 
I think it's not a bad idea. Yeah, write some books. Call yourself Dr. Nat Calloway. I am a doctor. Yeah, you are a doctor. Not that type of doctor. It doesn't matter to me. And you people. shouldn't listen to my advice because it's not medical advice. But I am a doctor. But so, so it's funny. Um, so someone pointed out to me a book about vaccines and vaccinations. It was like an anti-vaxxer book. And it talks about like the truth about vaccines. And it has a picture of a guy with like, a, you know, the white, whatever, frock of a of a doctor with a stethoscope. Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't the author. That's just some model. And the author just has a bachelor's in psychology. He's not a doctor at all, but like they p- make it look like they're a doctor mm-hmm. just to sell the book. Yeah. If you, if you have to do this, you know what I mean? Your, your, your platform is already pretty weak, right? But you find a lot of people going for it anyway, because look, people want to hear what they want to hear. So it's like, if, if you're telling them something that they you know, it's confirmation bias. They mm-hmm. like it. They don't care who you are as long as you're saying something they like. Well, and I think another thing that doesn't get talked about a lot, and the reason I think a lot of people are drawn to alternative therapies, is that a huge fraction of the population has been very poorly served by our medical system, right? And in, in all variety of ways. And so instead of sort of understanding that, okay, well, this system is trying to get better, you know, it's maybe not perfect, but we're trying to get better. They, they say, you know, screw the doctors, screw the drug companies. I'm going to find my own path, right? But, and I think a lot of people's, you know, not sort of just trust, but dissatisfaction with the sort of medical system is, is rightfully placed because it's, historically, it's been if you're like a white man, those, your problems are, have been looked at in the past. Everyone else, they pretty much had to wait until the 70s. And um, it's only then did it get marginally better. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff that's been bad for people that's been pushed by the medical industry. Because I mean, with the best of intentions, but people weren't served. They weren't served very well. I did remember that when they had those like medical elixirs, which were like opium and cocaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those were the days. I mean, that wasn't that long ago when you think about it. Not really. Um, yeah, so Max, we're talking about cheese. We yeah, got so, off topic. so the cheese, based on like this meta analysis, it looks like there is some mild benefit to cheese. It's not like a huge benefit. It's not like the healthiest thing in the world, but it does seem like relatively consistent that there is a mild benefit for uh, various cardiovascular diseases, stroke, etc. Well, that's that's the stuff they thought it was going to be not stroke necessarily, but cardiovascular disease. That's what they thought the saturated fat was bad for, right? Yes, but I mean, Take the, saturated your fat thing, the, the saturated fat studies always have, have had problems with them. Mm-hmm. Probably also depends exactly where you're getting it from. Like, I, I know everyone hates co- or a lot of people hate coconut oil because of the saturated fat nature, but it's relatively clean. It doesn't make you feel bad. I don't um, know. The the hipsters really love uh, coconut oil. Particular hipster that I know. Uh, instead of uh, f- uh, brushing his teeth, uh, he would do what's called pulling, which is when you get coconut oil and you sort of swish it around in your mouth until all the all the germs fall off or something. I don't know. I don't know how it's supposed to work. Has he lost teeth yet? Um, n- not to my knowledge. So it must be working, right? Mm. Take that big toothpaste. Take that big fluoride. Yes, they are uh, contaminating our precious bodily fluids. Our purity of essence. So cheese. Cheese is good for you. Yeah. Which I like to hear because I eat uh, an absurd amount of it. Yeah, so and unlike, let's say, wine, where there's definitely a J-curve associated with it. So, you know, some of your risks go down, like for diabetes and some cardiovascular risk goes down if you have like a little bit. And then it starts going up if you drink a lot. Uh, for cheese, it's generally either your risk keeps getting lower the more you eat it or it kind of flattens out. It never really goes up, you know, to where you're increasing your risk for something. I mean, at some point, you so that you means know, you can have as much as you want. Yeah, but I mean, the good thing about cheese is it, it is a it is a fat or it has a lot of fat, so you you get satiated with it without eating a ton of it. It's a macronutrient. Yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I don't know how. It's the reason I could never, ever, ever become a vegan. Cheese. Nor should you. No. Well, I, I'm already low carb. What the heck would I eat if I'm a vegan too? Just avocados. Do they have enough protein? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, you have to go to like legumes or something to get any protein, and they actually have a lot you have of. Have to carbs. go to what, Max? Legumes. A legume. What, what? A legume. No, a legume 
Uh, is that that uh, Brooke Shields movie, Return to the Blue Lagoon? That's, that's the Blue Lagoon, yes. <laughs> what, lo, how do you pronounce it? The Lagoons. Legume. A legume? A legume. I don't know. I call it legume. I don't know. I could be wrong. but I, I, I could also be wrong. <laughs> a legume. It just sounds wrong. It sounds like something, you, you know, some sort of condition. Oh, yeah. I'm going to the doctor. I have a legume. <laughs> My legume falled off. <laughs> what we're talking about it here is beans let's just call them what they are they're beans yeah so anyway uh so theranos got officially dissolved as a corporation uh this week yeah what were they doing until then trying to keep the lights on yeah just trying to get more uh, investors or yeah, something probably i mean they, they still had some money they had to kind of spend it uh, i don't know why people don't just let these things die Oh, I mean, it did die, uh, but it's amazing. So I'm, I'm most of the way through Bad Blood right now. Uh-huh. And I mean, it was no secret to the many, many, many people who worked at Theranos, or at least to a, a good number of them, that it was a complete fraud. I mean, they had this, their Edison machine was just, they had like a robot with pipettes inside. And so when they took the cover off, it just looked like a m- middle school science project. So anyone who's seen inside it saw that like there's really nothing to this technology that's revolutionary at all. They originally tried microfluidics, but then they oh, were... Oh, I tr- didn't even know that. I didn't know they moved away from microfluidics. Yeah, at, at the beginning they were trying microfluidics, but they couldn't mm-hmm. get it to work because with a tiny drop of blood, with the microfluidics, you get like leakage and all this stuff, and things got diluted so much, they didn't have enough blood to test for this stuff. But she was going around saying, oh, there's 70, you know, 70 tests we can run on a single drop of blood. It's like, no, you can't. It's just there's, there's certain, you, you need a certain amount of blood. Mm. you know for any individual test and also there's different categories of tests that you need to run so you can't just rerun it on the same sample you, you, i mean you do have to like kind of spend some on on different types of tests mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah i mean I, I there's been technology to run tests on small volumes of blood for a long time it's just your signal to noise just goes to crap oh totally so it's it's not like you can't detect things. You can, but you just have a, a much higher noise threshold that's just sort of not acceptable to most people. But for something like forensics, you know, for them, they got that's what they have to work with. It's like a drop of blood. They can do all sorts of tests, right? Because they're not diagnosing somebody or anything else like that. Yeah. So anyway, it was, it was just amazing, and and the board was totally protecting Elizabeth Holmes. You know, even like so George Schultz, I mean, this was kind of already reported, um, I think, by John Kerry in one of his articles. So George Schultz's grandson worked at Theranos mm-hmm. and he discovered how it was all a complete fraud. And he told his grandfather about it and just, you know, kind of detailed everything. And his grandfather's like, I don't think that can be true. I mean, it's being used in medevacs in operating rooms right now. And the grandson's just like, no, it's not like. I would know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it, it was just like, I, you know, I don't believe you because Elizabeth Holmes, she's a billionaire and she told me this is true. Yeah. I mean, he even had Mad Dog Mattis say she's one of the most ethical people he's ever met. It was, it's just amazing. I mean, this girl knew nothing. She was, I mean, when she started Theranos, she was something like 22 years old. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't even know. I think she was trying to make it like a patch that also that diagnosed you and gave you drugs at the same time. Yeah, and that was the I original concept. Some details like that. Yeah, and so it's just completely more. But I thought they held on to the microfluidics. I thought that was like the secret sauce. And at the time, microfluidics was like one of those buzzy sort of things that you kind of heard about if you sort of paid attention to the, the science page in the New York Times or whatever. So lay people were like aware of this. Like now it's all, uh, you know, CRISPR and talk about microbiome. It's it's sort of these buzzy concepts Mm. where uh, these companies will crop up overnight and be like, we've got this technology and then explode and then just disappear. And so, but I didn't, yeah, I had no idea that they just abandoned all their core concepts. Yes. Uh, Well, uh, well, I I think at some point they were, they they were working on getting it to work, but like the Edison machine, which is the one they, they kept uh-huh. using for these tests, was just a robot with like a pipette. Yeah, it was like an auto sampler, right? Yeah. And and then also, you know, her lawyers were aggressive. Like she had David Bowie's as her lawyer. I mean, he was like a shareholder and all that stuff. And so he would just go after anybody who, I mean, they would go after her. As soon as an employee quit, they would want to like go through their 
Gmail to delete any company related emails and gave them like ironclad non disclosure agreements that so if they ever actually whistle blew, they'd be they'd first have to deal with Theranos' lawyers possibly bankrupting them. Mm-hmm. So it was just I don't know. It, I mean, this thing was going on for years. A lot of people knew about it, and yet it was still allowed to go on because of well, she had powerful, powerful friends, powerful lawyers, and there was just fear amongst the employees for doing anything. I'm always surprised at these things when when some of these details come out. Just how big the conspiracy ends up being. Because I'm always like, no, you can't get that many people to lie for you. And answers, yeah, sometimes you can. If you if you give them enough money or you scare them enough, I guess you can. Yeah, they they basically did both. I mean, they would just bully people into silence. And, you know, they're worried about their jobs and their kids. And, I mean, the one guy killed himself. Like, he was supposed to testify in some patent case. Mm-hmm. Um, because someone had patented something that related to the Theranos technology, but they were outside Theranos. Anyway, he, he just couldn't take the stress and he killed himself. Mm, sad. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully she goes to jail for a long time. Hopefully. And this is sort of interesting. It's like the end of the saga feels like a bit with the actual closing of the doors. But yeah, we'll see. Bye, Theranos. How little we knew ye. You won't be missed. You were providing no benefit to society anyway. Um, so is there anything else? I just, okay. So, um, I know I'm going to get a look from you, Mm -hmm. but I want to talk about a a little political thing. I really think that political derangement syndrome should be included in the next DSM. I think it would be DSM six Mm -hmm. because so the other day, so there was this woman who was sitting behind the SCOTUS nominee, uh, Kavanaugh, you know, in the Senate hearing and she was like making a circle with her hand while it was resting on her lap. So either like maybe she was like picking at her finger or something. I don't know what she was doing. So all these people started freaking out saying that she's making some white supremacist symbol. And it was like, what? First of all, I don't know what they're talking about in terms of the symbol. And it, it was like literally she was sitting there with like an O. I mean, seriously, the world flipped out her. So she's the wife of a U.S. attorney. And he went and had to publicly say, look, she's she's half Jewish, half Mexican. She's really not a white supremacist. I don't know what you people are thinking about. And some of you guys have mentioned our baby daughter. Please leave me a baby daughter out of this. Like, so some people get so deranged. Like, they just think anyone associated with this administration is like a neo-Nazi. They're seeing these symbols everywhere. I mean, what, soon they'll they'll they'll... Anyone who mentions the number 88 is going to be outed as some Nazi. I think I actually saw articles about that. Like, oh, he's the number 88. You know what that means. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering with that 88 thing. I listened to another podcast about that. Yeah, so it's... It's, uh, it's bad as a tattoo. It's really bad as a tattoo. Yes. And, I, I mean, and if she, this lady got unless some you were weird born in hand sign tattooed on herself, then maybe, maybe. I'm just mostly curious what what this white supremacist gang sign is is it just the okay sign have yeah, i been t- just misusing this my whole life because i i did that to a kid last week oh my god you, i gave you, him the okay wait you are a skinhead Sh- shut up max i'm just bald <laughs> um no well yeah so, so what I, I've been told is it's also the symbol is part of like something called the game that my 13-year-old would play, yes. where if you see that symbol, it means you lose. So maybe she was calling the senators losers. That's when you first started explaining this. I was like, oh, so literally everyone just lost the game. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, look, it happens on both sides. Uh, you know, the whole Obama is an Arab thing during his administration. And so you're seeing yes. signs of that everywhere. The birther conspiracy, maybe, the, Max? Yes, the birther conspiracy. Yes, yeah, seeing like, oh, see this little mark? When you, when you magnify it a thousand times, you can see mm-hmm. this shadow of the number eight, which shows that it was photocopied and wasn't real. Like, I've seen people like with circles and arrows everywhere, you know, just pointing all these like things. And I'm like looking at it, I'm like, I don't, I have no idea what they're talking about. So it happens on both sides. So I think there should be something called political derangement syndrome. It happens. People go nuts. Well, what's going to happen, though, is you're going to have people with political derangement syndrome 
that are gonna go nuts. Cause they're like, you're trying to suppress me. I know the truth. Jay Z is king of the Illuminati. Oh yeah, that's right. You were saying that he he was making like a symbol with his hands at some point. Yeah, him and Beyonce make a make an Illuminati triangle. Because triangles mean Illuminati. In case you didn't know, in sort of conspiracy world, triangles mean the Illuminati. But isn't it just the? I mean, because it's a Masonic symbol. Like, yeah, yeah. It's and, and that's just the Star of David. Yeah, the, these things are all true, but you're asking this thing that doesn't make sense by its very nature to make sense. So, yes, in conspiracy world, triangles, like literally the basic shape in which all other shapes are made, means Illuminati. Okay. So you'll see it inserted into all sorts of things, like this microphone that I'm speaking into right now has got a triangle on it, which means probably an Illuminati. So are we all Illuminati since we all have triangles somewhere, including Maybe. on the $1 bill? Maybe. I'm not. I'm the only one that knows the truth, and everyone's just trying to suppress it. I think literally everyone else is Illuminati, maybe. Oh, I'm a Freemason, so I'm, I guess, a subunit or something. No, you just haven't been called up to the mothership yet. No, it's not a mothership. It, 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 they have a whole different system. It's not, it's not, we're not. We're do, not. Do uh, the Illuminati don't wear aprons? Is that we're, we're not Scientologists. Yes, we wear aprons. Well, I said, but the Illuminati don't wear aprons. They probably do. Oh. I mean, there probably is a group called the. It's like the Bilderbergers. It's a bunch of rich people who go to like some resort and have fun for a few days, just exclusively like eyes wide shut style. Yeah, there's probably plenty of those. How do I get invited to these parties, Max? So I remember reading a book about. I think it was by a former KGB agent, and he was just talking about like kind of the history of KGB operations in, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So he, he, I think he was actually the KGB archivist. So it was actually interesting. There was a couple of KGB agents who went to D.C., and they infiltrated this set of parties that would occur in the D.C. area that was exactly like that. They were like swinger parties, Ice White Chuck kind of parties, and and that's how they got information. They would... Wouldn't have sex with important people, you know, government officials, blah blah blah. I mean, that was their one hundred percent their strategy. Mm-hmm. Infiltrate uh, that those kinds of parties. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I always ask myself, why do people get into politics? And I think the answer is these parties. I think it's like, why else would you do get to be super powerful except that you have just absolutely ludicrous things that normal people don't have access to, right? Well, yeah, Either I mean, material wealth or like crazy eye white shot parties. Yes. I mean, well, all of them get rich because they can all insider trade. They yes. know what's coming and they can just buy the stock. I mean, very few congressmen start out poor and don't end up rich. I think Joe Biden's the only one who's like relatively normal in terms of what his lifestyle was when he was in office. Okay. Anyway. Um, oh, oh, um, one one more thing. Did you forget a biotech news? No, no, no. It was just so uh, Eric Tobel brought up this uh, paper about lowering the the p value threshold from 0.05 to 0.005. Okay. And so the whole idea is that the really efficacious drugs, the ones that make a difference, usually don't just have 0.05. They usually do have 0.05. So like the chemos and like the whatever, like it's basically very unequivocal data. So all you get is a lot, when, when you have it at 0.05, you end up with a lot of false positives yes. and not so many false negatives of actually truly efficacious drugs. So I think I think that's actually a pretty interesting idea because it's so it would also, it would be much harder to also data mine to get to that level because right now, yes. You know, you're going to have like someone go through 50 data sets, come up with something, some combination that gets them to 0.037. And you're like, come on, guys. Like, oh, so it only works in people who have been diagnosed in the last five years that, you know, are over 65 years of age Mm -hmm. and have had one heart attack in the past. Yeah, I mean, to put it in perspective, that's in, that it, right now it takes 20 comparisons to find one with that, uh, just from random chance, right? Just because it's yeah. 
and the other ones would be 2,000, right? If I got remember your number correctly. And so if you have to do 2,000 comparisons, I mean, you, you could still find something. You can still do that with a relatively simple data set because you can slice it and dice it 15 different ways. It would just look ridiculous. But what you're going to end up getting is a subgroup that makes no sense. Yes. You're going to get something completely weird, right? Like people with A's in their names who... Uh, Libras. Who are Libras, yes. <laughs> this reminds me, what, what was that? Didn't I show you that that yeah. um, that paper about how this, they found in a study that a, <laughs> one, what was it? Yeah, it, I think it was, it was just like this giant, it might have been like a cardiovascular outcome study with like 40,000 patients, and they were talking about the dangers of data mining. Yeah. So they showed how, in their study, it showed that Libras were more likely to whatever live longer or react uh-huh. better to something and it was it was quite funny yeah i remember that it was great yeah and then of course there's the other one um there was a paper that compared different placebos and apparently red placebo is the most efficacious of all the different color placebos. well i mean that might be true that might be a real result I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, if, but it doesn't work. It's a placebo. I know it doesn't work, but like the placebo effect is a real thing, and there might be different degrees of placebo effect. And a red pill looks like a serious pill, or a Benadryl. Like, or ooh, that's got a, that's got some powerful stuff in it. If they made it red, so like you can hide it from the kids. Maybe that's why Sudafeds are red. Maybe that's the marketing. No, Sudafeds are red uh, because it's supposed to make uh, meth making more difficult or something like that. Oh. Like, I know there's something in the coding like that the the meth heads have to scrape off, and but so they'll sit there and they'll scrape off like thousands of those pills. Hmm. They do that in Breaking Bad. No, he did like he had a fully synthetic route. Okay, he made what you might call biker meth. Okay, <laughs> death ball meth. Death ball meth. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Uh, don't do drugs, kids. Yes, and also um, just to reiterate please don't listen to anything we say medically or on the investing front make your own decisions these are just our opinions yes make make decisions people and uh don't make the same mistakes i made (laughs) all right that's all i got okay awesome see you next week yes and don't forget to subscribe and review us on itunes thank you Our theme music is by Hazar.